Well, hello, boys and girls on internet and learning Python. Welcome to another Python web scra scraping tutorial. And we're still going to look at beautiful soup and we're going to look at how to do exception handling because you want to connect it reliably whenever you are scraping uh, data from a website. So the web is messy, data is poorly formatted, websites go down and closing tags go missing. One of the most frustrating experiences in web scraping is to go to sleep with a scraper running, dreaming of all the data you'll have in your database the next day, only to find out that the scraper hit an error on some ex unexpected data format and stopped execution shortly after you stopped looking at the screen. And in situations like these, you might be tempted to curse the name of the developer who created the website and the oddly formatted data, but the person you should really be kicking in is yourself for not anticipating the exception in the first place. <coughs> so let's just look at uh, the first line, not the first, first line after the imports and figure out how to handle any exceptions uh, this might throw. So uh, this is the line and there are two main things that can go wrong in this line is that the page is not found on the server or there was some error in retrieving it or the server is not found. Uh, in the first situation an HTTP error will be returned In this HTTP error may be 404 uh, page not found or a 500 internal server uh, error uh, etc in all of these cases the url open function will throw the generic exception http error so we can handle this exception uh, in the following way so let me just bring my uh, ide up here and we'll just create a new file because this is just to illustrate uh, scrape test error handling py. Let's just call it that. So, in very basic format, we import the URL lib and from request URL request, we import URL open. There we have it. And from URL lib dot error, we import HTTP error the class. And in this case, we uh, try the following first: uh, URL open. Let me get the page that we have worked on earlier. Slash pages slash page one dot html and in the case of HTTP error, put it as E, we print the error out and this will return null break or do some other uh, plan B excuse me this is I'm just uh, illustrating something first and uh, here uh, the program continues so this is just a, uh, a quick pseudocode if you like uh, so in this case, if an HTTP error is returned, the program now prints the error here and does not execute the rest of the program under the else statement. So if the server is not found at all, let's say that the python scraping.com was down or the URL was mistyped, URL open will throw an URL error. This indicates that no server could be reached at all, and because the remote server is responsible for returning HTTP status codes, an HTTP error cannot be thrown, and the more serious URL 
URL error must be caught. So we can add a check to see if this is the case. So let's just continue writing our code here. Dot error. And we import URL error. And let's keep this and put another in case of URL error as E print the server could not be found. Uh, in the else clause, we'll put print just some basic to illustrate how exception handling works. So in this case, it should work. Mm, no module name URL lib. Okay. Repose. It works, but if we try to access. Uh, Page that is not there. Okay, HTTP error not found. So let's just try this one for the sake of fun. Yeah, the server could not be found because it's not there. So we tested all the errors that we could get. <clears throat> so of course, uh, if the page page is retrieved successfully from the server, there is still the issue of the content on the page not quite being what we expected. So every time you access a tag in a beautiful soup, it's smart to add a check to make sure that the tag actually exists. If you attempt to access a tag that does not exist, beautiful soup will return a non-object. The problem is attempting to access a tag on a non-object itself will result in an attribute error being thrown. So let's say we have this one from our earlier example. So let's try to uh, access a non-existing tag uh, from our previous example. and just try to access some tag. So this will return a non-object. This object is perfectly reasonable to handle and check for. The trouble comes if you don't check for it, but instead go on and try to call some other function on the non-object like we are trying to do here. So yeah, you see here, it returns the the object uh, an attribute error uh, of non type and object has no attribute some tag because the tag does not exist so so how can we guard against these two situations so this the easiest way is to explicitly check for both situations let's just do some pseudo code again So just to illustrate what we are trying to do, let's say we have a, a variable called bad content and it's, it's the same. We are trying to um, access a non-existing tag. Like I said, this is just example, example code. And then we say tag was not found. So let's 
So if it it's, it's if it's a uh, exception there, we throw out an error. Print the tag was not found. Else, if bad content is equal to none, same thing. It's not found. And else print if it's found content. So this is just um, to show that like this checking and handling of every error does seem l laborious at uh, laborious at first, but it's easy to add a little re reorganization to this code. Uh, to make it less difficult to write and more importantly much less difficult to read so let's try to reorganize or rewrite uh, our um, our scrape test reorganized with error I'll just name the way I remember um, uh, my script name so let's try to rewrite this request import url open open it's good to have the intellisense uh, tell us if we type something wrong or not import http error class yes it's there vs4 recognizes it and this is the one thing of using vs code uh, as uh, to oppose to uh, sublime text is that the intelligence here is much more um, intelligent <laughs> so it works much better uh, here than in in uh, in sublime text maybe i'm not that good at setting up sublime text so that's why i switched to vs code so definitely check that out url open open the url and accept HTTP error as E return none and then we put another try clause object equal to put soup dot html dot read and here you can put your parsers that you want to use. I always use uh, LXML. That's the I switch. I I use LXML or the HTML5 parser. So yeah, because the built-in is it's not that. Uh, good I think not the not for the purposes that I've tried to use it uh, title is equal to beautiful suits uh, body at h1 yes set attribute error as e turn on Case. So title is equal to get title HTTP famous page HTML one if title is and then print title 
find Nance. It's found. The title. Let's see what this code does. It gets the um, the uh, H1 uh, element tag of that page. It, it does the same that we did before, but there is lots of things going under the hood. So, so in this example, we're creating a function called get tile, which returns either the tile of the page or a non object if there was some problem with retrieving it. Inside get title will we check for an HTTP error as in the previous example and also in the capsulate two of the beautiful suit lines inside one try statement. An attribute error might be thrown from either of these lines if the server did not exist. Uh, HTML would be a non object and HTML dot read would throw an attribute error. We could in fact encompass pass as many lines as we wanted inside one try statement or call another function entirely which can throw an attribute error at any point. So I'm going to round off the very uh, intro basic stuff for, for uh, HTML parsing. So when writing scrapers it's important to think about the overall pattern of your code in order to handle exceptions and make it readable at the same time. You'll also likely want to heavily reuse code, having generic functions such as get site HTML and get title uh, complete with uh, thorough exception handling makes it easy to quickly and reliably scrape the web. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the full explanation of how to structure your exception handling and connecting reliably uh, with, you, with your web scraping uh, projects. So if you enjoy this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it, comment or anything uh, that help, will help me out. So I uh, hope to see you in the next video and bye for now.